Women, since the beginning of time, have been rejected and considered inferior in most cultures. Recently, women have begun to gain more liberties and privileges in several differently, formerly man-run niches, such as politics. However, in the world of fashion, many women are still suffering from extreme rejection and impossible physical standards. Companies such as Lululemon and Abercrombie reject women who are not thin enough, saying that women of normal body type are too fat. Because of the impossible standards set by major fashion companies, women have suffered widespread embarrassment as well as frustration regarding their weight and their inability to match a model's perfect physique. Many high fashion stores refuse to sell clothing to seemingly overweight women, and some stores do separate the clothing of these women from the clothing of thinner girls. How thin a woman is does not determine how physically fit she is. Generally, skinny women may not be healthy, as healthier as larger women, who may tend to work out and these women who generally work out are not model thin. In a society that insists that people be themselves no matter what, we will delve deeper to discover the struggle between societal pressures and individuality. The images are everywhere. Magazines, TV, the runway. The message, thin is in. I don't know if you've heard about this. There's a bit of a controversy going on surrounding Abercrombie and Fitch right now. Do you know about this? <laughs> All right, you probably heard about it if you're a teenager or if you have a teenager or if you like to wear your shorts where most of your butt hangs out. <laughs> the CEO of the company announced that his stores will stop selling clothing for women larger than a size 10. <laughs> well, here I'm out. He has a really good reason. Because according to him, anyone who's a plus size isn't cool enough to shop in Abercrombie and a shirt that they sell for a woman. This is the absolute largest size you can buy there. And here, this is the smallest. <laughs> this is what they prefer to sell. This is who they want to shop. Vancouver billionaire and Lululemon founder Chip Wilson may have inadvertently taken a piece out of his company's bottom line. For a long time now, there have been complaints about the quality of the company's popular and pricey yoga pants. Many say the material is too sheer and not as tough as it once was. But as Crystal Gamansing reports, instead of taking the blame, Wilson took a shot at the size of some women's thighs. There have always been pilling. It, the thing is, is that women will wear seat belts that don't work, or they'll wear a purse that doesn't work, or quite sit, frankly, some women's bodies just actually don't work for it. Shit. It makes me, um, like, I'm a lot less confident when I don't put myself together because of what I think other people are thinking of me. It like makes me think about what I'm going to wear every day and stuff like that. Like I take it into consideration like what others are going to think of it. Uh, society makes me feel like I should be very much judged on my own appearance. Um, I like to like make sure that I'm physically attractive for people to only to like you and it's kind of depressing that I have to make sure that I'm perfect for everyone and not for just myself. The media, like, they kind of, like, show, like, you know, certain magazines with, like, really either, you know, men that are physically in shape or looking good or same thing with women, you know, whatever the case may be. And, you know, just they, they do it through, you know, magazines, through TV, through video games. It's just nonstop propaganda. Like, society, Basically, everywhere you go, you see a specific type of body. Like, I, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, you never see, like, models that are that look like actual people. I'm not saying they're, they're not actual people, <laughs> but, like, they're not the usual. Like, they're, like, an exception, I would say. Like, not everyone can look like that. So, like, because you see that um, everywhere, you see it in magazines and TV like that it tells you like that's what you should look like and if you don't look like that then you should feel bad so I guess in that way that's how like society makes me feel. I've come to a point where I feel really confident with how I look 
but even even then I have my days days where it's like my thighs are too big or oh shit I must be putting on weight my jeans are really tight and in the end it shouldn't matter so long as I feel healthy and so long as I'm happy with how I look but it gets to you no matter no matter how you look at it it's just our society is so obsessed with how we look that it it's no longer how you think you look beautiful is important it's how other people perceive you as beautiful is what's important I am affected and I will also say that it's not that doesn't mean that I am um, weak or anything it's just that society itself entirely has to be affected because the only way to not be affected is to be upside from society um, there's no way to avoid all the um, media um, everywhere you go there's a screen everywhere you go there's a store and even by looking at other people that you interact with so you being a member of society effectively makes you um, affected by it it's just what is important to know is the extent to which you are affected so some people are more affected than others because they have um, well the media itself and all this attention has a stronger impact on them. Some people are more indifferent to it, but they're still affected because it's still subconsciously in your head by simply interacting with other people um, who are also um, affected all collectively by this um, giant um, media and corporation setting these norms. It's unfair and it is very a decision that is it's not acceptable because um, he basically exclude what he thought was not um, the ideal people. I think it's kind of ridiculous that like they're trying to tell people what they should be and what they should look like instead of telling them to like embrace themselves. I mean, it's 2014 now. I think we've gotten over the whole entire you need to be skinny and you need to look like this. Like, it's more about you need to be yourself. It makes me nervous, I guess. Like, it's, it's like an uneasy feeling not knowing how people react. It's ridiculous that they would do, that each company would do such a thing like that. Personally, I think that they should be making clothes for everyone and there's no there's no way to just, you know, single-handedly single, single -handedly just say, like, you know, certain size people can't wear certain size clothes. I think that's ridiculous. They should be open to everyone. Otherwise, one, they lose business, and two, they lose people that actually, you know, want to wear something nice because they're nice clothing. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is just um, another of society's attempts to tell us how we should look like and what a perfect body is. I don't, don't think that the fashion industry really takes into account like the different variety of um, bodies that the women have. Like there's no not a standard body and there's no reason why we should live to fit into that standard body. So um well I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Actually I've noticed it going shopping over spring break I noticed that I didn't fit into a medium anymore, that I only I could only fit into a large and a skirt. And I feel like they don't, there's, there's only so many sizes. There's small, there's medium, there's large, and then there's whale. And if you're a whale, you're not going to fit into anything. And if you're only beautiful, if you're a small. There is a lot of, your size definitely matters, what you wear definitely matters. Like you mentioned Abercrombie and Fitch, and Abercrombie is Fitch is a, ma is a major company that a lot of, young girls will wear and <clears throat> it's it's they're saying that there's only one type of body is beautiful but this is a societal construct there's there's no right way to be beautiful in other societies it's considered to have to be a little bit larger in your build to be beautiful it's only in certain parts of the world that small frames are considered attractive so I think that it's it's not true in the least and it's something that's being forced upon girls at a young age and then they believe it as they're getting older. 
Does it My thought on the uh, recent incidents uh, with Abercrombie & Fitch and Lemon is that, um, as you can see, the media and all these clothing and, and accessory companies are trying to set stringent um, uh, regulations on what is supposed to be the acceptable uh, rule for women and, and even men, um, everything in, in general, um, to make people feel not confident with the, their own image and trying to strive to be something that is very hard to achieve that way many corporations, many um, advertising companies, many uh, clothing companies and so on um, are able to profit even more by uh, executing a, a, a more exaggerated idea of what the acceptable norm is in society. And that way many people feel, as I said, not confident with their own image, um, feel more pressured in having to accept what society is setting to feel confident with themselves. and effectively corporations are profiting from it um, at the expense of the um, lack of self-confidence and uh, self-esteem of people as said by the media artificially. I think it will get better because the millennials or the, the generation Y now, which is us, are very um, diverse and we're kind of learning what everybody is and how is everybody so we with that with that we are kind of learning what the new stuff is and I guess we are really liberal so we tend to be more accepting that kind of stuff so I guess yeah we accept more of, of a different not that different is not pretty. Um, I think it's like progressively getting better. It's just one of those things that it takes time because it's going to take a lot of different people to like learn to ex accept it and live with the whole entire concept. But, uh, it would only get better if more people fight against it, but if people don't stand up and you know, and tell the company, hey, it's time that you, you know, did the right thing and not, you know, be focused on just yourself, because we don't know what they could be. They they very well can't fit into their own clothes, you know, one day, and that can be their own fault. Things will change and everything will be happy. Um, it might continue, but I hope it doesn't. But I also understand that, like, in the past, there were also unrealistic um, expectations for models, for example. Like, I know back then, Back in I don't know the 80s, like models were supposed to be like really skinny or stuff, and now they're like supposed to be attempting to have healthier bodies, even though they're not. So I'm guessing like over time it might get better. I hope it does. Well, that really depends. Um, there really does seem to be a movement among the female community to prove that beauty is not a thing attributed to size. Or, or restrained in any form. And right now it seems like the companies are not really listening, but we've got this surge of women that are saying, I'm beautiful I'm the way I am. And eventually things have to change because more people are being aware of this. So I think it's only a matter of time. Well, I believe that in the future, um it will continue that same way or it could, well, the thing is that my belief is that a lot of what is in the media is trends and trends um, go on very quickly. So yes, fashion and trends uh, move very quickly according to um, the things that the media and corporations see that it will be the new thing for them to, uh, again, uh, make a profit on it because that's basically the end point. These companies, um, clothing companies, um, accessory companies and so on, they're not on profits. They work on a profit and they create these new trends um, depending on uh, changing features on what they believe will attract more people and according to that they will keep evolving uh, different types of fashion, different types of norms that are going to become the next acceptable thing. Um, 
and again that will keep people um, consuming this by feeling that if they don't they are not um, being appropriate to what the society is setting um, so yes in the upcoming 10 years 20 years um, fashion trends are going to change um, what the acceptable way of of being um, whether it is uh, being thinner where it is being fat it's going to change um, and it's going to uh, I cannot really say uh, exactly how it's going to be but I just know it's going to keep changing because that's how these companies can keep being profitable. That's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> we are all beautiful. So one of my one of my favorite people, one of the people that I have a great affection for is actually Marilyn Monroe. And she was a size 14. She said that beauty wasn't really a number. And she had several faults, like anybody will admit that. But she she is exactly the kind of woman I want to be. Like, I'm happy with how I look and that my size doesn't matter, my face doesn't matter. And if I believe I'm beautiful, I am beautiful. <laughs>